Today is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, I don't know how many of you knew that or that's ever been on your radar or not, but it is the day that um, Jesus foretold and they foretold years before, I think Isaiah, one of the prophets foretold it, and um, Joel wrote and, and that this was going to be an event that happened. So, and you just think now, this is Pentecost Sunday, but just 10 days before Jesus ascended back into heaven. And he began to tell them things that were going to take place and remind them. And they weren't, you know, they have already seen Jesus die. He came back. Everything has changed just like the situation we're in right now. Many things have changed, and we believe that they're going to be changed for the better as we get into this uh, more. And so, um, all right, I'm going to read a little bit here. So it's in Acts 1, and gathering them together, this was Jesus. He had not yet ascended. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? They're still not sure what's going to happen. They're, they're thinking that they're soldiers or somehow some uh, person, you know, who they thought was Jesus, but some other power is going to come and save their people and in a physical sense, their nation. And he said, it's not, uh, they said, Lord, is it time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father is fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. So Jesus told them, go and wait. Here again, they didn't know what to expect, didn't know what was going to happen, but he told them to go and wait. And wait is not something we like to hear. And especially when we don't know what we're waiting for. But he said something about power to them, but you'll receive power. And um, then this power will be able to give you the ability to be my witnesses. So he's a... So, they go and they obey him. They go and they wait. You know, when we think of wait, when we've been in um, Myanmar or uh, Southeast Asia, the waiting staff, the waiters there really know how to wait. I mean, you, you're eating toast and a crumb drops, and they come over with their little cute little table dustpan and, and sweep that up. They're watching your every move and anticipating and seeing what you want. That's the term of wait that Jesus was uh, referring to here for us to do is to wait. Not like the kid, uh, Lola or Chris, if you're sent to your room and you just wait there and think about what you've done. No, it's not that kind of wait. <laughs> and we're, we're just waiting for mom or dad to, to cool off or whatever. That's not what he's referring to here. He's saying, uh, just go and wait. There's something great. And they didn't know how long they were going to wait. And it winds up being about 10 days. But during that time, it says on in this lengthy passage that they were continually devoted to prayer. They gathered together like we were. Right now, we've been in a situation where we've been isolated and, and quarantined. And we've been waiting, waiting for things to turn back to normal. I hear that all the time. And I don't want it to go back to normal. I want to see greater things and better things come out of this in our families, in our homes, in our personal lives. And as while we're waiting, and we've mentioned this before, to be listening to God to what is going to come out of this and how he's going to use it, use it in our lives. And so when they did uh, get through this time and uh, they were all gathering together and meeting and there was a group of them waiting where God told, where Jesus told them to 
wait, and uh, i got to find. Then Peter gets up and begins to talk and, and read the scriptures that foretold of this coming. And then, as they were all stand, being there, it was about 100 so, they were gathered there together. The Holy Spirit came in and power came into them. The power of the Holy Spirit. They began to testify and speak in tongues and people were hearing these things happen and they were astounded because they could there was many many countries there I don't remember how many but many many countries and people from other countries and they were hearing these people speak God knows how to speak to all the people in our lives and that it come from a different background and come from a different place and he'll be able to use us to speak their language to speak to them directly and minister to them and help them but they received this great power from God and after they came out of it extraordinary things happened because of the power of the Holy Spirit and it's made available to us it is what we what gets us through life it's not power that we're waiting on for God to do his thing it's the power we're waiting on to come on us for us to do what God wants us to do to do the thing that he has for us to do not just to give us the ability to do our everyday little things which he's going to to help us get us through our struggles. But there's something he has for you to do. And he's given you the power and the ability to do it through his Holy Spirit. He will guide you and comfort you. So out of this, extraordinary things came on that day of Pentecost. And supernatural things happened on that day of Pentecost. Powerful things happened. And I pray that for each of us as we're coming out, as we've waited on the Lord, been able to spend time in his word and, and reflect on how we want things to be and how we want our life to uh, look in him. And we want those extraordinary things to happen at coming out of this. We want to see supernatural things happen in our government, in our community, in our workplace, in our lives, in our health. We're believing for supernatural health and supernatural thing. And we want powerful things, the things that we set our hand to, to be powerful, but to have spent time with God and find out what he has for us to do that will be so powerful in the lives of others and in ourselves because we're not just created to serve ourselves, but to serve others. So that's what I'm thinking of on this Pentecost Sunday, and, and I pray that you allow that spirit of God, that ho his Holy Spirit, to fill you to overflowing, that you see these extraordinary, supernatural, powerful things take place in your life. Well, and before we go to prayer, um, uh, Franklin Graham is called this day as a day of prayer for our nation, and rightly so. We've seen some very extraordinary things in um, in the last few months and then in the last few days as well. So uh, he's calling us to pray, and I think it's a very wise thing to do. And uh, the thing, here's the things that we're going to agree and pray with, as many other churches and believers across the world are praying today. And we need to pray for peace because the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. For uh, James 1.20, pray for perspective. Boy, we've taught that a lot. The way we see something is not the way somebody else is seeing it, and it's not the way it necessarily is. Perspective is big. Because the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace, peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. James 3.17, pray for patience while we're waiting and for things to change like we would like to see them change. Pray for patience because of God's kindness and forbearance and patience towards us all. Romans 2, 4. And pray for the outpouring. That's great. That's what, Jesus, what God did, what Jesus foretold on the day of Pentecost, an outpouring 
of his wisdom and direction through his Holy Spirit to pour out on all mankind to work in their hearts and lives. And it's the only way that peace will come is through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and, and, his, and God moving in our lives. For his wisdom and direction for our leaders and officials who are dealing with the crisis of these last few days and as well as uh, the, pan, the, the virus and the things that we're going through in those ways. Ask God to change hearts and heal this chasm or this divide we have in our nation. So would you all stand with me now and we're going to pray for peace, perspective, patience. And we do want to see God's outpouring in our lives and in the lives of many others. Dear God, we just thank you so much for this day, this opportunity to be free, to be free, to be filled with the Spirit of God and to be filled with your joy, to be filled with victory, to be filled with uh, healing. We just thank you, God. We thank you for our church body. We thank you for our community in this state. And God, now we pray for our nation. We pray for the world. But right now we pray for our nation. We pray for peace. And we, we refuse the anger that isn't godly. And we pray for perspective on this, God. We want to see your perspective. Man's perspective does not mean anything. We want your perspective on our life, our health, on uh, the economics, on uh, the political view. We want your perspective, dear God. And we pray, God, for patience. We are so much not wanting to wait. We want it now. But God, in our waiting, may we have the utmost belief and faith in what you're doing that we can't see, that only you can do. And we just join in that and pray and worship as we wait to see what our eyes don't see right now. And so, God, and we just thank you. We thank you that you're there to pour out your spirit on all mankind. And we receive it. Begin with us, God. Let us receive your, what you want to pour into us. May we receive it and not tell you that we want this part and not this part, but we want to receive from you. We want to receive love for all mankind. And we pray for this outpouring in this uh, community and in our nation, God. We watch and we wait with anticipation to see your wonderful, marvelous works. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, we'll receive the tithes and offerings right now. God bless your Pentecost Sunday.